1. Many years ago, I spent some time working in a pizza restaurant. One afternoon, an applicant tried to hand me two pieces of paper, stating words to the effects of, I'd like to submit this job application and have you sign and attest that I submitted the application so that I can keep my public assistance benefits. Although I really do not want a job. I stared at them blankly, as I was absolutely floored that this sort of thing really does happen. They shook the papers in my face, ordering me to accept the documents. Even more shocked, I stammered that I'd have to go get my shift leader. I high-tilled it to the kitchen to tell my shift leader what had just happened and stated, I absolutely will not be signing anything or even touching his application, but I will not try to stop you from doing what you think you ought to do. They said they're not sure it would be legal to send the applicant packing without taking his application and signing his document of proof of application but that he totally understood my discomfort. I have no clue what the proper legal response would have been in this situation, but I'll admit to not really caring about that. The shift leader did indeed accept the application, and he also signed the compliance document. The applicant also repeated to my shift leader that he didn't really want to work, which was probably quite helpful to me. When I noticed that the shift leader had left the application on the owner's desk with a note attached to it, I wrote a note for the owner, in which I briefly explained what happened, and I stapled the note to the application, then left these papers in the same spot the shift leader had left the application. I worked the next day, and the owner was present for part of my shift. When they noticed and read the application and attached note, he marched to me, and while shaking these papers in my general direction, shouted, Why, young lady, did you take the application and sign his paperwork? I calmly and respectfully stated, Sir, all I did was write you that note. The shift leader did the rest. The owner quickly walked away while muttering something to the effect of, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I was not super happy with the manner in which the owner had conducted himself, but felt no need to call him out. A few minutes later, the owner came back to me looking embarrassed and told me that the shift leader had corroborated my explanation, apologized very sincerely, and told me he was pleased with what I'd done when the applicant came by. A bit later, the owner left, and I thanked my shift leader for having my back. I said I hoped that he was not mad at me. Thankfully, he said that we were still friends. 2. These McDonald's managers were, in my opinion, very power-hungry, and abused their power a lot, even in front of a district manager who didn't seem to care either, which led to me quitting after just four months, not to mention that they tried to guilt-trip me into staying with them, despite how they were abusing their power by overworking me. It was my third month of working there, and I was just doing my usual thing, because I was running the main register indoors, and here walks in one of our manager's friends with a puppy in her arms. I'm thinking, uh, why have you brought a puppy into the building? Clearly, it's not a service dog, since there isn't any service animal tags or bags. But the managers immediately surround her and start playing, cooing and drooling over the puppy. They were basically letting it lick them, hands, face, and they were even kissing it repeatedly too. Then, after a couple of minutes, the friend decides to leave because she had errands to run. The manager waves them away and goes right back to work, without washing their hands, and I'm just staring at them baffled. A day later, I'm at home, and see a one-star review stating they ordered at the drive through and found animal fur in their food. I'm thinking, I wonder why that happened. After that, I quit working there. And another month later, I decided to check that McDonald's location review again. Lo and behold, there is a nasty one-star review stating that a customer had ordered from the drive through and they found a used condom in their burger. I'm thinking, ew, gross, good thing I left that job. Because I've had managers point fingers at me for a mistake they made, but said I was the one that distracted them and made them forget to fix the machine. I tried to clarify that it wasn't my fault, but the district manager didn't listen and gave me a write-up instead, which is one of the reasons why I quit working there and gives the location the nickname McButthole. 3. This happened during middle school, when volunteering was required for schoolwork, and I had the unfortunate experience of dealing with a Karen that got mad at the workshop coordinators for being well-behaved kids to help out with the workshop, while letting her own hobgoblins run amok and knocking over plants. 
Before this experience, I've rarely done volunteer work. I've helped out a few times, but that was for church events for family members. So this was new for me, cause it was required for school, and I'll admit my job resume consists of volunteer work than actual jobs. I've been at the flower shop all morning and helped customers load their plants or help the checkout, and when there weren't many customers, I'd help out by watering the plants and moving them around to make more space for other plants. Then Karen appeared, and we could tell she would be a problem when she stormed up and just stared everyone down like they were dirty peasants. She looks around at the plants, all while throwing dirty looks at the coordinator's kids and grumbling to herself about something. Me and the other volunteers were moving things around when Karen walked up to us saying loudly, Excuse me, where are more of these types of plants? As she is holding a pot in front of her, I take a look at the tag and go searching for the plant. When I return, Karen has walked off somewhere, and I couldn't find her, so I walk off to finish moving things around. Hey, where's the plant I asked for? What? Oh, I couldn't find any more, but I'm sure the coordinator might have more in their cars. Well, then go and get two more pots for me. Also, make sure they don't have any dead leaves on it. I need them fresh. I'm not sure where the coordinator car is, but I'm sure you can ask him yourself. Karen just huffs and puffs away. So I go back to doing what I was doing. Not long after, Karen pays for some plants she was looking at and demands that we help her load the plants into her car. Since we weren't busy and the workshop was closing soon, me and the other volunteers help load the pot into her car. As we're approaching the car, we hear some kids yelling and screaming from there, asking if they can go and see the plants before they leave. Karen opens the door and lets them run around for a bit, while we load the plants into her car. As we walk to the workshop, we hear the kids running around among the rows of plants and even starting to move tags around on the pots. The hobgoblins even started pushing the pots across the stalls, and a lot of them were very close to tipping over which we had to rush over and catch before the pot falls off the stalls, while telling them not to shake or push the pots around, because the coordinator paid a lot of money and spent hours to grow these plants. The coordinator noticed this Karen and told her to keep an eye on her kids, since Karen had come back to shop around a bit more. Well, why should I have to watch my kids? You've got plenty of babysitters to watch your kids. Surely they can watch my kids too, instead of just standing around doing nothing. These teens aren't our babysitters, they're high schoolers doing volunteering work. Yeah, whatever, just tell them to keep an eye on my kids. Karen just walks away and continues looking at the plants, while her kids continue running amok and even started playing hide-and-seek among the stall stands, bumping into the stalls whenever they ran by or ducked under the stands to hide from one another. Hey kids, can you not hide under the stalls? You're bumping into the stalls and causing the pots to shake, and we don't want them falling onto the ground. But Mom says we can play wherever we want, and these tables are perfect for hiding under. She might have given you permission to play while here, but there are heavy pots here, and if it falls in your hands, you can easily get hurt. Now please don't crawl under here and don't bump into them either. As I'm finishing this, I hear a loud crashing sound, kids laughing and sprinting away. I turn to see a pot that had fallen onto the ground, and dirt was spilling. I run over and find an empty pot to place the plant into carefully making sure I don't accidentally damage the roots. Not long after I finished doing this, I noticed the hobgoblins had gone quiet, but Karen was still browsing, which made me slightly suspicious. And since I've babysat most of my little cousins, that means they might be causing trouble somewhere. As I'm walking towards the back rows of plants, I notice some of the pots that were set up back there had disappeared. So I wave over the coordinators to ask if they moved them, to which they said no. That's when we hear kids giggling from a few feet away. We follow the giggling to see Karen's hobgoblins had ripped the plants out of the pots and were playing with the dirt. The coordinator gets mad and yells at the little hobgoblins messing with their plants, causing them to start crying and running to Mama Karen. The other coordinators come to see what happened and bring over a dustpan, as well as extra bags of dirt to refill the pots with. As me and the volunteers are cleaning up the mess, we hear the angry scream of the Karen, Who dares yell at my babies? The coordinator goes to deal with Karen, and this is what I can remember of the exchange. Well, who was it? Who was the one that made my babies cry? Was it that Asian brat who threatened to drop a pot in my baby? I look from the mess to the Karen with a WTF look in my face, 
Kazan never said that and just warned the kids of the danger of clay pots falling on their heads. Luckily, the coordinator didn't believe Karen's BS and told her that I wouldn't say that and that I just warned the kids not threaten them. So you're siding with the Asian because you don't mind them stealing your job. Well, I guess you don't mind losing service when I report you to your boss. Go ahead and report me, because we're the ones who coordinated this workshop, and not an actual business. You can take the plants you bought and just leave, because we don't approve of you making false accusations or racism towards our volunteers. Karen gets mad and proceeds to knock over some more pots before storming off. Luckily, the ones she knocked over were low to the ground and didn't break. But she decided to be even more petty by throwing other plants from the back of her car and smashing them in the parking lot. Before she comes storming back to us demanding a refund, which I don't believe she got, because they had no refund policy or something I don't remember, which caused her to become even more enraged, and the coordinators were forced to call the cops to make her leave. The other volunteers and I ended up staying an extra hour to clean up the dirt, repotting Karen's plants, taking down the other plants, and loading them back onto the coordinator's cars before we could leave ourselves. 4. I'm not against working in a group, but I still prefer working alone instead of in a group, because most of the time I end up doing all the work or I'm pushed to the side and ignored, especially like the following two encounters. It was reaching midterms, and I had to do a group project that was required for a proper grade. So I endured and went along with the project. The group consists of me, along with four other classmates. I'll call them Slackers 1 through 3, and the last one will be called No Show. None of them had the idea what to do our project on. Since this was a PowerPoint class, you'd think it would be easy. But it wasn't, because I was the one who came up with the idea for the project. My idea was about animal abuse and banning unwanted animals. Even though I did most of the research and set up the slides, Slacker 1 suddenly wanted to start a brand new idea and use it instead of my idea. But I've already completed most of the slides for my idea. If your idea is already completed and done, we can look over it and we can choose which one to present. Well, I've only thought of it and just know that I didn't like your idea, so maybe we can use my idea instead, but I'm going to need help setting everything up first. I'm confused, but pull up my most completed PowerPoint and show it to her. She still believed that her idea would be better than mine, so I told her that if she could complete her project before we had to present, then we'll do her idea instead of mine without a complaint from me. Well, time was drawing near, and the time to present projects was automatically picked by our instructor. My group was one of the last to present, because we hadn't volunteered to go first. By now, I was just doing last-minute changes here and there, while waiting to see how Slacker's idea was coming along. The next time we meet up as a group to see how our project was coming along, because every other time we would plan to meet Slacker 1 would make up some kind of excuse to be busy, or nobody would show up besides me to talk about the progress of Sacker's project. Eventually, she just messaged me over the college work chat that will do my ID instead. Well, they refused to meet up so we can practice presenting, and they were basically just reading off the slides or made some stuff up off the top of their head. And when the instructor asked any questions of them, they just turned to me for help, and I ended up answering the questions. After the presentation, the instructor asked who was the project leader, I told her it was me, and I was given a paper to fill out with how we come up with the project and where we can improve as a group. Well, I was honest and wrote that I came up with the idea, after two weeks of my classmates not bothering to come up with anything, and that we didn't work together at all since nobody wanted to show up to any of the said planned meetings. Because of this, we got an average score. I got the highs for doing most of the work, and everyone else got a low grade. But questioned why they didn't get the same grade as me even though they know the reason why they got the grade they received. But the next incident is worse than this incident. Again, I'm taking a PowerPoint class. This time it's the advanced class, and unfortunately the same professor was teaching the class. And I wish I hadn't taken this class because he's the only professor that teaches this class face-to-face, while the other professors teach only online at our sister location, which is too far for me to get during my work schedule. Midterms comes and follows his steward required to pass the class group project. 
It pairs me up this time with five other classmates, and they are Sackers 1 through 3, and No Shows 1 and 2. How these girls pass the class, I have no clue. Slackers only attend the class last 30 minutes, and always are on their phone. And I never see the no-shows appear once in class. Due to this reason, I ask if I can work alone instead, because I already sense this is going to be a very heavy burden on me. Professor Idiot refuses to let me work alone, so I suck it up and go to meet my group members. Our project this time was comparing two different topics and why we chose it. I chose a topic I grew up watching. Slackers didn't say much besides half-heartedly saying, Yeah, sure, sounds good. So I went with it. Slacker made a group chat for us to chat about our progress. It was a good idea, until they just used it to casually chat with one another. But when I asked how their research was coming along, I was just met with the sounds of crickets or just completely ignored as usual, which I just brushed aside as a sign of You might be part of this group, but we don't want to be involved with you. So I did all the research again, and put together the slides, while occasionally picking at my phone to see what the rest of my gripmates were chatting about. Only once did they suggest to meet up and see how far the project was coming along. But when the day arrived and I was waiting for them to show up, nobody came and I was just waiting around for them, just focused on doing the extra research they didn't want to do, as well as adding it to the slideshow. Weeks went by, and I'm handling all the research and assembling the PowerPoint slides, while my group members weren't doing their parts and weighing me down further. I did go up to Professor Idiot and tell him how little my group members were helping with the project. But he was no help, and told me to be mindful of others because they might have other things getting in the way. Yes, I even showed him the group chat and how they ignored my questions. But Professor didn't believe that it was due to them not caring, more like they were getting to know one another. I was beyond annoyed and just focused my energy on working on our project, rather than stressing myself out with my anchors. Another two weeks goes by, and Professor Idiot tells everyone that we'll be presenting our projects the following week. So be prepared to have everything done by then, because if not, we'll be getting points docked each time we don't present. Slacker 1 finally remembers I'm part of the group and asks, How's the project coming along? When can we see it? We can get together and look at it tomorrow if anyone's available to come. Uh, actually, we're busy tomorrow. How about the day after? The day after is when we're supposed to present our project. We need to be ready when we present our project. I need everyone to be cooperative so we can get a good grade. Okay, fine. We can meet tomorrow, but it has to be before 4 p.m. Because we've got important plans to deal with. Fine by me. I just want to have everyone look at the slides and we can choose who will read what part. See you then. Again, I was already there like before, but the Sackers didn't show up until nearly 4pm. While no shows were nowhere to be seen. I go over the slides and like usual I'm receiving the half-hearted, uh, okay, sure, sounds good. But before they got up and left me just sitting there, internally facepalming myself and knowing that we might not get a good grade... Presentation day arrives, and I'm dreading it. Because knowing that I did all the work and they did nothing, I'd be the one answering all the questions like last time, and we'd get points taken off, because only one person did all the work. Strangely enough, no shows for once showed up for the presentation, but it didn't help when they spent our entire presentation interrupting me in the middle of a sentence and making up random things to make it look like they knew what they were talking about. We received a D, which I assumed would happen. Then I was pulled aside and told that he had received several emails from Slackers that I had been very uncooperative and rude to my group members. I told him that I haven't and was the one doing all the work. The professor didn't believe me and was basically sucking up to the Slackers by telling me, You're lucky the presentation went well, or I'd have you removed from the class for being disrespectful to your classmates. I was livid and did report him to the dean, but Professor Idiot claimed he only said that to defend Slackers. I was allowed to finish the class. Now I refuse to take any class he teaches. 5. This story happened to my dad. He was driving home from wherever he had been, and this Karen was behind him, just honking her horn like he was driving at a grandma's pace. He was driving the speed limit, and Karen was, I believe he said, right on his rear. 
He was waving his hat out the window for her to just go around him if she wanted to go faster. After a few more minutes of her leaning on the horn, Karen finally goes around him, and as she is passing him, she started yelling things at him. And he wasn't giving her any attention. But I'm sure she was probably screaming Asian slurs at him, or just calling him an idiot for driving the speed limit. Being in front of her on an open road, which nobody else was driving on except him. She might have even flipped him off too before zipping off at a speed that was over the limit. My dad just continues going at the average speed. And just a few minutes later, he spots a cop car, and Karen's pulled onto the side of the road. My dad then slows down just enough with his passenger side window down to wave and give her his most smug grin before continuing on his way home. I always imagine Karen sticking her head out the window and screaming something about how my dad intended on her getting pulled over by driving purposefully slow when he wasn't going too fast or too slow. But then again, he's driven down that road many times and always remembers that a cop is always stationed at that section of the road for speeding drivers. I'm surprised he didn't flip her the bird, because he never hesitates to flip the bird at others or yell F off to others for cutting him off. But maybe it was due to there being a cop right there, and my dad didn't want to risk returning the bird back to Karen. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Idiots in the Wild, episode 95. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before we go, please do hit the like button and share the video with friends and peoples and stuff. Uh, family members, I think they're called. Okay, let's see. Uh, right, let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... What are you most looking forward to in the upcoming year, if you're comfortable sharing? Personally, my partner's coming to visit me for a couple of weeks, middle of the year, and I'm greatly looking forward to that. A lot of things to do to get ready for it, uh, but I'm very excited. Whatever you may, may be planning, I look forward to reading it, and uh, with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.